Type man in boxing, led the flair cops. Shout out to Goodfellas Sports TV. Don't forget to check out our sponsor, The Hell Blaze, at TheHellBlaze.com. 100% all natural products from lotions, soaps, foot soaks, bath bombs, and much, much more. Use the promo code GOODFELLA1BOXING. Tell them your boy CJ Goodfella since you get 18% off. We out. All right, man, we back. Appreciate everybody for checking in. Let's talk about who should Ryan Garcia fight next. Javante, Tate Davis, Devin Haney. Let's get to it. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, bell like icon button, share the video. Appreciate the love, support. Uh, best way to donate to the channel is share the video. But, um, but yeah, like we talked about his performance yesterday, and, you know, he knocked Luke Campbell out. It was a hook that Luke thought was coming up top, and he dropped it to the body. And that showed good, um, you know, good uh, IQ by Ryan Garcia. But my issue with Ryan Garcia is that he keep his hands low. I don't like his footwork at all. And he keep his head on the line. Um, and he stands straight up, you know, people say, oh, he reminds me of Amir Khan. Yeah, he kind of reminds me of Amir Khan, but I, I think Ryan Garcia is way less reckless with his combinations than Amir Khan. He could throw one or two shots at a time. So that's the difference between him and Khan. But I think he's, I think Khan got way more bend in his knees than Ryan Garcia. Ryan Garcia stands straight up and his chin goes straight up because his body is basically straight up. He got a little bit in his legs, but you know, your body straight up like this. His chin come up. And that's what Luke Campbell called him, moving straight back with his chin up. Hands down. His hands is always down. He kind of pick his hands up every now and again. But when he punch, he bring his hands down here. And that's why Luke was able to counter him with that left hand and put him down. But my whole thing with Ryan Garcia is, you know, Eddie Renoso just looking real suspicious as a coach. Because he ain't fixed shit with Ryan Garcia. He ain't got a really high head movement. You really use your legs to keep your feet off your line. His 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 legs suck. His, his footwork suck. He don't bring his hands home. You know, technically, he's done nothing with Ryan Garcia. Of course, Ryan Garcia ain't going to be a slick fighter like that, being slick. But at least get, get him to squat down and go like and break, pick his hands up. Ryan Garcia will be straight up like this. And then he punch. He throw his left hook, right hand versus Luke. His hands come back here. So then when somebody punch, he got the reaction to going straight up, not tucking his chin, not moving out the way, not rolling the shot, you know. Taking some power off the shot. He got an issue with, he goes straight up. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Amir Khan keep that head straight up. But Amir Khan, he got that amateur rollout movement. But he know how to step to the side. Boop, 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 boop. Step to the side. Boop, 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 boop. Ryan Garcia, he boom, boom. He flat-footed. He ain't on his toes. He boom, boom. You know, and he just looked fundamentally fucked up. And you, I mean, you paying Eddie Renato, so how much money? To coach, he just looked real suspicious to me. This just seemed like they found the talented fighter in Canelo Alvarez, and they really hit the jackpot in him because they not fixing nothing with Oscar Valdez. He about to get beat up by Burchett. They ain't fixing nothing with Ryan Garcia. Nothing with Ryan Garcia. Ryan Garcia, hands down, standing straight up. They don't teach no bend in his legs. They ain't got no moving his head, his footwork all over the place. So when you're talking about going and fighting some guys, like like I say, let's talk about with Devin Haney. One thing about Devin Haney, he he don't like to get hit, <laughs> or whatever it is. He he thinking about moving before he punch. So I think his odds of fighting Devin Haney is way better. I think you know they have some history in the amateurs, but I think with Devin Haney, you ain't got to worry about Devin Haney trying to knock you out. Devin Haney, he always on his toes. He always he don't really sit and plant. And then when he do plant, he thinking about getting out the way and evading attack. So uh, personally, I think the Devin Haney fight is the easier fight for him because you ain't dealing with a puncher. You ain't dealing with a guy, you know, who got a lot of experience in this corner. His daddy don't have no experience in the corner, but he's just trying to wing it. Let's keep him one hump on. You're dealing with a kid that don't like getting hit. So I think Devin is the superior technical fighter, but I think Ryan Garcia got the equalizer. He can put him to sleep. He give him that night quill, PM, okay? So I think he could put him to sleep, but my whole thing about it is, you know, it just depends what Devin brings to take. De Devin got a wide stance, which indicates he's looking to punch. But Devin just, they both such amateurs. You know, you're talking about, you know, guys that's world championship fighters and or title holder in Devin Haney and contender in Ryan, in Ryan Garcia and mandatory. If you go back, let's just say 30 years, for example, you go back 30 years, like you wouldn't see these unfinished products on a world championship level. You know, Michael Nunn had 37 fights before he fought, you know, for a title. You know what I'm saying? James Tony, not James Tony, but uh, Ray Jones had a lot of fights before he fought to the title. Marvin Hagler was the one I'm looking for. 
He had a lot of fights before he fought for a title. Let's keep it on Humbun. All right? A lot of these dudes fighting for titles under 20 fights, and they ain't ready. You know, Devin Haney wouldn't be a world champion 20 years ago, 30 years ago. Now, with that style, you know how many people would have whooped his ass? At lightweight, he couldn't He couldn't hang with a lot of the lightweights. The Alexis or Grails. I think Aaron Pryor fought down there. Salvador Sanchez was somewhere down there. Floyd Mayweather, Jose Luis Castillo, Shane Mosey, Eric Morales, even though that wasn't his best weight. You know, you couldn't fuck with them. You know, but then again, in this boxing world, we prematurely put these dudes on the pedestal, and they're not ready. Ryan neither or Devin, Gar Devin Haney is ready. But I think Devin is the more talented fighter. We ain't never seen Devin drop, but we ain't never seen Devin fight the op like that. You know, so. To be honest, that'd be an interesting fight, but I think Devin Haney is best served finding a coach that's going to be in the corner, giving the sole instructions, making his dad just manage the money, be the PR guy, handle the interviews, stack up the money, okay? Let his daddy need to take a step back. Just handle the business, handle the interviews, handle the PR, you know, handle the Devin Ben Haney brand, get him a deal with Adidas, Nikes, the, uh, Grant Gloves. He need to be that guy, you know. And if he step back and he allow his son to get with a trainer, that's good for him. That'd be right, you know. Floyd Sanders is really good for him. You know, Mike McCullum, I think he'd be good for him. You know, just let him get with a trainer, hear one voice, work on some things, allow them to do it. Mojo son. And however way they want to mojo son, I think then, you know, he might be unbeatable for a while. But, um, you know, Ryan Garcia, if I'm him and I'm looking for a title fight, because you fight Tank at 35, only thing on the line is that fake title. You know what I'm saying? I think Dan, Devin Haney, people say he's an email champion or whatever, but Lomachenko didn't fight him to defend his title. So, I mean, I think if I'm his team and we're looking for a fight between Devin Haney, Tank, TFM Lopez, you know, whoever else up there, I'd probably be like, you know, we'd say Devin, Devin Haney on, but at the same time, he needs some more work, and I think he needs to find a new coach. Because Eddie Renoso, maybe Canelo should coach him, you know? Because Eddie Renoso, he ain't Nick. He don't know how to coach no, but I'm looking at him. I'm looking at Valdez, ain't nothing happening. You could say, well, Valdez is a fighter stuck in his way. I'm looking at Devin, Ryan Garcia. He just fundamentally is ass. He fundamentally booty, 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 butt cheeks. <laughs> well, the nip just say, I got way too many cars in my driveway. He ass cheeks, you know. If I'm him, I find me a coach, you know, that can that can really bring the best out of me because he need footwork. He don't even seem like he balanced. He need to squat, squat, bend his knees, squat down. But I'm guessing they probably got him standing upright. Well, he ain't even upright. He's straight upright because of his height, but. Like I said, Luke Campbell, heart pump, purple Kool-Aid. So I ain't really surprised there, but you know, he need he or maybe Oscar can coach him. You know, that'll make sense. You know, Oscar had that upright style, but Oscar knew how to how to how to how to bend and how to hunch. And Oscar knew how to tuck his chin. And Oscar had one of the best jabs in boxing. Ryan Garcia, man, he punch, he's sharp. He got good hand speed, he got good power. Issue with him is he just don't look like comfortable. You know, he just look unbalanced. He's like a spinning top when it's slowing down. But him and Tank, I mean, he might have a chance to beat Tank. Because Tank don't get ready. He don't come ready. Tank remind you of James Tone. He like to come in the gym and spar. He like to fight. He like to spar to get in shape. He don't like to run the miles and do all that. But his last fight versus Leo Santa Cruz. Leo Santa Cruz was giving him that garlic parm. He was giving him that garlic butter. He was giving him that two-piece in a biscuit. And Leo was beating him. So Tank is a Tank is a slow starter. You know, Tank is a plotter. Seems like he's carrying luggage on his back. You know, he just, you know, people saying, oh, Tank could knock him out. Yeah, I can see that. But I don't really, Tank is just, he, Tank just don't seem dedicated. Tank, Tank don't seem dedicated. You know, he real, you know, good fighter, softball, and I think Tank hit him, he going to sleep. But the thing I like about Tank is Tank know how to go to the body. Tank take give what you take. So Ryan going up right, he tank gonna touch that body. You know. And he kinda just takes some time to get started. He got a prime tank up. Take about two or three rounds. But to be honest, he another one of the dudes who a product of match banking, man, that he wouldn't be world champion 20, 30 years ago. Not at this point. 30, 35. He can punch, but he one at a time. So that's what Ryan got to understand. When you're doing with Tank, it's one at a time. They don't come in bunches. They don't come in flurries. 
He trying to put everything in one punch. Ryan stay off the ropes. Use the angles. Use his jab and his height. The only thing with Ryan, it, his chin comes straight up. He got to reach him in it. But what Tank going to do is, Tank going to touch him to that solar plex, touch him to the rib cage. And he going to come over the top and knock him out. But I, I prefer him fight. Uh, if I'm him, out of the two, out of the three with T.O., I think he should fight Devin Dix. That's a more winnable fight. But, hey, let me know what you guys think. Don't forget me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. You can reach out if you have a business question, inquire, respond to your video request. All my social media links, description, fast forward, reach me to Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Also got a Facebook group. Want to make a donation to the channel? Cash App, CJ Good 313. That's in the description. PayPal link there as well, too. Appreciate the love and support. We out.